الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ای الاحباب کنٹینیو آن ان آر دسکشن اباؤ اخلاق اخلاق حسنہ righteous manners or righteous morals as we mentioned on countless uh, occasions the many ahadith and ayat min kitabillah that illustrate for us the importance of having good and righteous conduct as a Muslim the believer should set the best of examples in all of their situations in all of their various environments and in and places in which they inhabit. So therefore, if a Muslim is in a Muslim society, they should set a righteous example. But even more so in the situation where a Muslim is in a non-Muslim society, in order to be a form of da'wah in Allah, and a form of calling people and inviting people to that which will benefit them in this life as well as the hereafter, and that is Islam, and the Islamic values and morals. Ayyul Ahbab, a person or human beings are made up of a soul and those things which have to do with the heart inside, and of course our bodies our outward appearance. And as is illustrated all throughout the Sharia, that akhlaq or mannerisms are a part of that esteemed position of the human being meaning that they comprise a human being, especially your mu'amalat, your outside actions, as well as your inside. But your manners and your akhlaq does not have to do with your nationality or your color or your race. Let's hear what some of the ulama mention. فَلَنْسَانْ جِزِرْ وَرُوحْ ظَاهِرْ وَبَاطِنْ وَلَخْلَاقِ الْإِسْلَامِيَةِ تمثل صورة الإنسان الباطنة والتي محلها القلب وهذه صورة الباطنة هي قوام شخصية الإنسان المسلم فالإنسان لا يقاس بطوله وعرده أو لونه وجماله أو فقره أو غناه أو غنائه وإنما بأخلاقه وأعماله معبرة عن هذه الأخلاق. So a person is comprised of a body and a soul. That which is outward and that which is inward. And the Islamic mannerisms are exhibited or a reflection of what a person has inside. And this is what is contained in the heart. And Ayyul Ahbab, as we mentioned on countless times as well, when we talk about Iman, our faith, our faith is comprised of three. It is comprised of your belief in your heart, you know, what you hold in your heart in those forms of ibadah, your worship that's contained in your heart, like taqwa, like khashya wa khawf, you know, having fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, tawakkal ala Allah, relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the determination and trust that you put in Allah, all those things are the place in which they are manifest, are in the heart. But as well as you'll see the result of them on your limbs and in your outward actions. But however, the place of them is in the heart. As the Prophet ﷺ said, taqwa And whatever is reflected on, in a person's outward appearance is a reflection of what is contained inside. 
And so this is why whenever we hear our brothers and sisters, they say, well, you don't know what's in my heart. This is true. We don't know what uh, is contained in a person's heart, what level of iman they have or what level they don't have. However, their outward actions illustrate are one form of manifesting what is inside their heart. So, for example, because someone has a beard and they grow their beard for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can't measure that. Some people, they wear the beard as a part of their custom. As you'll find in many of the Muslim lands and non-Muslim lands, people have big beards. A lot of times for as a part of their custom. But then there are those who grow their beard for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't cut their beard. Why? Because they're trying to follow the command of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this case, this is an act of ibadah. And in this case, it's a reflection of their iman. It's a reflection of a part of goodness that they contain in their heart because they want to do obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the commandments of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who ordered us to grow the beard. And likewise, other acts of uh, outward appearances of iman. For example, our sisters that they cover themselves properly. And the ones who do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those ayat of hijab, then this will be on their scale of good deeds. And this is a form of ibadah. But however, you cannot determine strictly by looking at a person's outward appearance because a person could also, as the munafiqun, the hypocrites, they also illustrate, sometimes they illustrate even better than the righteous people from their outward appearance. You may see someone with the short, uh, short garments as a man above his ankle because this is also following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, the commandment of the Prophet wasallam, because he said uh, that that which is under the kabain, under the, the, the ankles, is in the fire. So the person who wears their garment above their ankles uh, from amongst the men, then, and they're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is an act of worship. They're avoiding sinfulness. And they will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for doing so. But the person who does it as a trend, because it's the latest trend in the shorts, uh, or, or whatever the situation may be, then, then their actions are related to their intentions. Then they won't be rewarded for that. Nor can we determine what's in their heart based strictly on their outward appearance. And likewise, or in addition to that, as we read, that a Muslim is not measured by their height or their width or their weight or their color or their beauty or how handsome they are or their poverty, or their wealth. These are not the things that a Muslim is measured by. And when we're referring to this uh, being measured, we're talking about in the law, Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't care about those things. And this is why Allah wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al-Kareem, or the Dalil, the evidence for that, Qala subhana Fi Kitab al-Kareem, يَا يَوَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقَنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَالْأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَرَّفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتابه الكريم in Surah Al-Hujurat, Ayat 13 He says to Barak wa ta'ala O you mankind So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all of mankind not just the, the mu'mineen here as far as how we'll be judged and what is the most important thing for us. Look at this. This is, this is very beautiful. And this returns us back to our purpose, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. This returns us to that divine purpose that everyone, Muslim, non-Muslim, jinn, were created for the purpose of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses mankind in the verses that we were talking about. Ya nas inna khalaqanakum min dhakr wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'ubin wa qabai. O you mankind, we've created you from a male and female. And we have made you into nations and tribes in order that you would know one another. This is the true UN, if you want to say, the United Nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to be nations to know one another. This is what Allah says. Inna khalaqanakum, inna khalaqanakum min dhakran wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'ubin wa kaba'in lita'arrafu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have created you from a male and female and we have made you into nations and tribes so that you would know one another. لِتَعَرَّفُوا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same ayat, إِنَّ أَقْرَبَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Verily, the most important the most, the one held in the highest esteem to Allah. Again, we're talking about Allah's scale, which we should be striving to uh, meet on this scale. This is the scale that we should be measuring one another with, measuring ourselves with. Inna akramakum yatkakum. Verily, the most, uh, the most uh, dignified, and the law to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has the most taqwa. It's taqwa ayyul ahbab. And taqwa, as we mentioned, as the ulama have mentioned, and we mentioned this countless time, times, that taqwa ayyul ahbab is adhering to the commandments of Allah azza wa jal and refraining from those things which he has uh, prohibited. So it's, it's adhering to the commandments and staying away from the prohibit, prohibitions that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you and has uh, articulated in the Qur'an because the Qur'an is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal and it's to be practiced and it's to be memorized and it's to be implemented in our lives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Akramakum and the Wahiyat Kakum. That the most the best of you, the most dignified amongst you, is the the one who contains taqwa, who contains piety, who's fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it isn't the outward garment. The outward garment can look nice and it can entice you and make you think, mashallah, so and so is taqwa. Look at her hijab. And this is a beautiful thing. This can be a way of exhibiting that taqwa inside and that, that, that iman inside. It's a part of iman, your outer appearance, the actions that you do, because iman is comprised of three. The faith in the heart, the faith on the tongue, and the faith on the limbs. All of this is comprised, all of these things make up faith, iman and Islam. So when you see someone, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, you see someone taking, removing a harm from the road, if they do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an act of worship they'll be rewarded for. And this is a part of Iman. This is a part of faith, a part of their faith. So it is outward appearance. So when you see your sister, mashallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, and she's wearing a hijab camel, a complete hijab, covering herself strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a very beautiful thing. And this is a part of her iman being illustrated. And then there are those who wear the hijab, and maybe it's a complete hijab, and it looks, and it deceives the people. But inside is, is, is either weak iman, or maybe no iman at all. Bihasaba shaks. It depends upon the person. And likewise, we see our brothers, some of our brothers, and no one knows the condition of of, of, of uh, another person necessarily. We can't make that judgment that so-and-so is going to hell and someone's going to, the parad going to paradise. But we make our judgments that someone is from Ahli Iman by what we see and what we hear from them. That's that Iman on the tongue. 
and that Iman being exhibited on their limbs. But as far as the heart, we really don't know. But those other things can be a manifestation of that Iman and that Taqwa and those good manners. And the second or second evidence for this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned with our, our taqwa and our, meaning our God fearfulness, our God consciousness and true iman and faith and not our outward appearance is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sahih Muslim qala sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam inna Allah la yandhiru inna Allah la yandhiru ila ajsadikum wa la ila surikum surikum walakin yandhiru ila al-qulubukum wa a'malakum the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wa salam said Verily Allah does not look to your uh, look to your bodies or your your appearance how you you your your appearance that you you give off however he looks to your hearts and he looks to your deeds again that's a part of iman iman bil qalb your iman on the limbs and of course on the tongue, what you speak about, what you say. Uttering the shahada, shahadatin la ilaha illallah, wa shadawin la ilaha illallah, wa shadawin la muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. All of that is a part of iman, ayyul ahbab. And all of that is related to the manners and akhlaq of a Muslim. And that those manners those ways in which we interact with one another are a part of our iman. When you do business, if you're doing righteous business, business in general, at, for the moment, it's a reflection of his or her iman. Because if they are doing it in accordance to the shara, in accordance to what's legislated in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet then they, uh, and, and being conscious of that and striving to do so, this is a part of their iman. It's illustrating an aspect of their iman, some of the righteousness. And likewise, their family relations, if they, their, their relationship with their wife or their husband and, it, and, and their children and their near of kin, all of this can be a part of their iman if they ad, adhere to the sharia principles and how they have relations with, with uh, others, then this is also a part of our iman. And this is a part of, this illustrates taqullah azza wa jalla if we follow the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid his prohibitions. And this is a part of our akhlaq, akhlaq, uh, good manners. And we'll end by the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Su'ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an akthari ma yudkala nas al jannah. قال تقوى الله وحسن الخلق وسئل عن أكثر ما يرخل الناس النار قال الفم وفرج The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام was asked on what will the help the people or what will enter the people into paradise the most what will be the thing that enters the people into paradise the most Prophet ﷺ said, Taqwa Allah wa husn al-khulq. He said, it is God fearfulness, you know, having taqwa and good manners. And then he was asked about the thing that will enter the people in the hellfire the most. And he said, the thin, the mouth, and the private parts. And we've explained this hadith on countless occasions. Uh, return to the explanations if you care to do so. And I'm sure there's many uh, beneficial translations out there and translations from the ulama, translations from the salaf and from Talib al ilm that explain for us the great benefits of that hadith and the importance of our manners. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.
مسلم